This is Mr. Anderson, Mark Anderson from Kellogg Community College, and today we're going to go over the second part of the Chapter 1 review for Math 121. Starting off with problem number 13, which is a story problem, and this story problem here is going to deal with the idea of two numbers that add up to a total. Now the question says the sum of two numbers is 83. One of the numbers is 11 more than the other. Now, what you might think to do is just go, okay, well, two numbers adds up to 83. But you can't solve this problem because you, there's no way to solve for two variables at one time with only one equation. So you have to figure out a way to get these variables to look a little differently. Well, you can have x stand for the first number, but for the second number, which we know is 11 more than x, you can rewrite it as x plus 11. And what this will do is this gives you the idea that, oh, I now have one variable in a problem that I can solve, and the second number is 11 more than the first number. Now, I'm going to use the associative property to kind of associate these two together, because the associative property is okay to do with addition and, and um, multiplication. So now I've got x plus x, which is 2x plus 11 equals 83. And most of us actually did this whole problem without parentheses, but that's okay. Um, then I'm going to use the inverse operations to move the 11 to the other side. So 2x is equal to 72, and then divide both sides by 2, another inverse operation over here. x is equal to 36. Um, and these inverse operations, where these numbers um, cross out, they're technically not canceling. As said in the previous video, these numbers are actually simplifying. This simplifies to 0, and the 2 simplify to 1. Now, we have our answer that x is equal to 36, so if we're trying to find our second number, we're going to take our x plus 11 and change that x into a 36 plus 11, and that's going to give us our second number, which is 47. 36 and 47 add up to 83. And when we do problem solving, uh, you have to show your algebraic work. You can't actually just guess and check until you get the right answer on the test. So you do have to know uh, some of your basic algebra problem solving skills. In problem 14, a little geometry problem here, the degree measures of the angles of a triangle are three consecutive integers. Consecutive integers, what does that mean? Well, consecutive means that they're next to each other, like 3, 4, 5, or 5, 6, 7. And an integer is a positive or negative whole number. Now, since we're talking about the measures of a triangle, we don't have to worry about any negative uh, numbers, since there um, are no negative um, angles in this logical problem. So what we have to do is we have to find the sum of three numbers that are next to each other that add up to 180 degrees. So we're going to kind of, um, again, you might be thinking like, okay, I'm going to take three different variables to add up to 180 degrees. Yeah, but the trouble is you can't solve for three variables in one uh, equation like this. You have to use one variable if you're having only one equation. So my first angle is x. My second angle is going to be x plus 1 because it's going to be three consecutive uh, angles, so they have to be next to each other. And my third angle is going to be x plus 2. And what this does, it gives me the idea that these three numbers are next to each other, like 3, 4, 5, or 5, 6, 7, and that equals 180 degrees. All right, let's get rid of the parentheses and do our associative property kind of mentally. Um, and the associative property would be to clump the x's together in this list. And if you wanted to rewrite that, uh, that would also be a, an example of the commutative property, which says that you can move uh, numbers and uh, around and variables around with addition and multiplication. And again, probably didn't do this step, but I just wanted to show you that this is, le this is legal. So 3x plus 3 is equal to 180 degrees. Now we're going to solve for x. Subtract 3 from both sides. This simplifies to 0. 3x is equal to 177. Then what we're going to do is we are going to, well, let me make sure I don't lose my place here, uh, divide both sides by 3. Got a little close to the bottom there. Cross out the 3's because they simplify to 1. 1 times x is equal to 59. 177 divided by 3 is 59. Now, um, if x is 59, then our second uh, angle is going to be 60 degrees. And our third angle is going to be 61 degrees. So our three angles are 59, 60, 
and 61. So there they are. All right, let me clear the screen and get to problem number 15. All right. This is kind of important since Michigan has a 6% sales tax. You should probably know a little bit about your percentages here. The Miller Oil offers a 5% discount to customers who pay promptly for an oil delivery. The Smiths promptly paid $142.50 for the December oil bill. What would the cost have been had they not prompt had they uh, not promptly paid? Okay, so what we're going to do is try to figure out what their original fuel cost was. Um, now, their fuel cost, we're going to give uh, the value of X there for the fuel. And what we have to understand is that X isn't just a normal X, that's really a 1X or 100% X. Okay, so if we had 100% X, we got to understand that, their, that they had their fuel cost minus that 100% fuel cost minus the 5% fuel cost discount and that would be equal to $142.50 because they paid $142.50 and if they didn't pay promptly, if they didn't pay on time, then this would have been higher. So let's figure out what they actually paid by taking the 100% minus their 5% discount that gave them this. Now if you look at 100% minus 5%, then that gives you 95%. So they paid 95%, which was $142.50. So if I go and compute this to figure it, like what am I going to do to solve for x? The 95% is being multiplied by x. So what we're going to do is divide by the 95%, and X is then going to give me your final answer, which is how much they would have had to have paid if they didn't get the 5% discount, and they would have had to have paid 150 bucks. And that's done on a graphing calculator or calculator, $152.50 divided by 90, uh, 0.95, or 95%, and they would have paid 150 bucks. All right, the last of the story problems here, problem 16, is dealing with um, a bit of a distance equals rate times time problem. Ooh, the dirt equation. Uh, fans of physical science and Math 101 have seen this a couple times. This is distance equals rate times time, which uh, can be used in uh, car driving, boat drive boat uh, floating, and in this case it is a boat. It's the Delta Queen paddle boat that tours the Mississippi River near New Orleans, New Orleans, Louisiana. It's not common for the Delta Queen to run seven miles per hour in still water and for the Mississippi to flow at a rate of three miles per hour. That means the rate of that boat is going seven in still water and flow against three miles per hour. So what's going to have is when it goes upstream, its speed is going to be four miles per hour. So the rate is going to be four, not seven, not three, four, because the problem states it's going upstream. So it's going to go seven minus the three, which gives you four. Now it says, at this rate, how long will it take the boat to cruise two miles upstream? So the distance that we want to go is two. And we're going to multiply by the time here. And you'll see that this, this actually turns out to be a pretty simple equation, because we're just going to get rid of the four in front of the variable t. So it's going to take um, a half hour to get to, uh, to, to get to where you needed to be. Now in terms of showing units, you could say that this is, could be you know in a two-mile journey, and you were going two miles per hour, or four miles per hour, excuse me. And we got to find our time there. Now, what's interesting when you throw the units in is that you, yes, you do divide by the four, but an easier way to see that it'd be you're taking instead of dividing by four, you're going one fourth hours over miles. Now this, if I multiply one-fourth hours over miles, you will see that the miles simplify and the hours simplify and the four simplifies. So all I'm left with is time. Now over here, the miles simplify 
because miles divided by miles is 1. And then I've got the 1 fourth and the 2. That's going to be the 0.5 hours. And you'll see that there's, look, there's my units left, hours. And so throwing the units up there, which isn't on the answer key, but throwing the units up on there does, um, does work, but it looks a little bit hairier there. All right, let's go to problem number 17. Problem number 17 is manipulation of variables uh, to um, isolate what we're looking for. And what we're looking to isolate is we are going to solve for the letter E. We have an equation, W, whoops, let me, it probably would help if I labeled which problem I was working on. Okay, number 17, W equals EI, and we're going to get the E all by itself. And I put the multiplication symbol in there just to emphasize that if two letters are next to each other, that means multiply. So what we're going to do is get the E all by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by I, and the I simplify, I divided by I is 1. So now I have W divided by I is equal to E. I can use the um, symmetric proper property to flip the problem around here. And there we go. E is equal to W over I. Problem number 18, we're going to isolate the letter M. And here we have F, F is equal to M, v, M times V squared over R. Now since we're trying to get the letter M all by itself, we're going to move things over and I think I'm going to take um, I'm going to take that R to get it over to the other side. Uh, some of you might have rem remember cross multiplying from another class. Um, I'm going to multiply both sides by an R in the numerator. And what this will do is the R's will then divide uh, and then simplify to make one. So now I have RF or FR. I'm going to put uh, the R in front of the F. Um, and now the M is one step closer to being all by itself. We we'll divide both sides by V squared. And I will not be doing anything with that square there. Those simplify. M is equal to RF over V squared. And I can use the symmetric property again to put my variable on the left-hand side, which will be really important when we get to inequalities, greater than, less than, and other uh, ones like that. So there it is, m is equal to rf over v squared. You could also have fr if you so chose. Okay, problem number 19. Problem number 19. We're going to take a look at, um, we've got, oh, my s's look like 5. So I'm going to use a cursive letter s, r plus tr. And again, I'll, I'll use a cursive, try to make a little cursive letter t. And an r is equal to u. And what we're going to try is try to get the R's isolated. Um, and to do that, what I can do is a little bit of factoring. If I want to try to get the R all by itself, I notice that both of these equations have an R, or both of these terms, sorry, not equations, both of these terms have an R. So I can factor out an R, and I'll have S plus T. And you'll notice that I could distribute that and make it look like this if I wanted to. And there it is. Now I'm going to get rid of that S plus T. It's a binomial. It's together. It has to be moved as a binomial. So I'm going to take my S plus T, divide it by both sides. And these simplify. So R is equal to U divided by the quantity of S plus T, parentheses optional. And there it is, problem number 19 simplified. All right, now for the end of this video, I'm going to be looking at the basics of some exponential functions, and I'll continue that in the third video. So we're going to move on to um, some of the exponential rules here. Um, we're going to start off with problem number 20. It's way near the top there. 20 um, deals with um, the, the base rule, which is if you have the same bases, and different exponents, what you can do is you add the corner numbers. So this becomes 6 to the 8th power, not 6 to the 15th power. It is also um, it is also not done on the answer key, but if you have the chance to simplify something like this, you probably should take the time to do so. Uh, for example, I'm going to uh, grab a graphing calculator and compute 6 to the 8th power. And to do so on your graphing calculator, you would type in, um, here we go, 
you would type in a uh, 6 and then use the caret key and the 8 and then that would give you your final value which would be 1,679,616. So I would like to see that on tests and quizzes just because I think we can easily do that and get that answer. All right, so let's go back. So that was the answer to problem number 20. Let's go to problem 21. All right, you'll notice that this is 2a to the fifth, and then, uh, no, whoops, I forgot my negative. Boop. Okay, and then we have 7a to the fourth. Now what this does here is you'll notice that this is a negative 2 and this is a 7. Now because this is all multiplication, we can change the order of this using um, the distributive, sorry not distributive, the commutative property. So you can think of that negative 2, that can be multiplied by 7, and the a to the fifth, that is, that is going to be combined with the similar base of a to the fourth. Now I will rewrite this just so you see what I'm doing here. I am just using, since this is all multiplication, I can rewrite the order. If there was any plus or minus in this, this would be an illegal step here. Um, very important when we get into some of our binomial problems in the future. So negative 2 and 7 gives me an answer of negative 14, no calculator necessary. A to the 4th, A to the 5th is A to the 9th, because you can add the exponents if they have the same basis. Then, for problem 22, you'll notice that we have another set of problems here. We have m to the fourth n cubed, and then we have m to the negative 2, n to the fifth, and then p to the zero. Ah, a couple different things here. First of all, we have a negative exponent. Um, the bases rule still works out. If you have the bases being the same, you can add these up, and that will give us an m to the second power, because 4 minus 2 is 2, or 4 plus a negative 2 is 2. Now, n to the third plus n to the n to the third times n to the fifth, you add the exponents. This would be n to the eighth and p to the 0. Interesting fact, any number to the 0 power is going to be 1. Um, so p to the 0 is 1, so this is my final answer for the problem. m to the second power times n to the eighth power. Okay, I'm going to do three more problems here to end the video. Problem 23. Problem 23 is a to the ninth over a to the fourth. Now with this rule, instead of multiplying, um, we are dividing. And the quotient of a to the ninth and a to the fourth, we would subtract the corner numbers, so this would be a to the fifth power, 9 minus 4, 5. And moving on, we can do this with negative exponents as well. I've got x to the negative fifth power divided by x to the negative seven power. So negative 5 minus 7. Now I'll show a little scrap work paper here negative 5 minus negative 7. When you ha are subtracting a negative number, you can do the swipe-swipe technique, which is addition. So what this will do, it will give you x to the second power, negative 5 minus negative 7, or negative 5 plus 2, or plus 7 is 2. So my answer is x squared. All right, 25, the last one of this, of this video. I've got negative 42, a squared, b to the seventh all over seven a b to the fourth. Now what's good to remember here is you've got to understand that the whole numbers in the front of the problem, these whole numbers, they can be simplified just like a normal fraction. So how many times does seven go into the negative forty two? It goes in six times and there's a negative in the problem because negative divided by positive is negative. So, then I'm going to have a squared over a, which is just a, and then b to the seventh over b to the fourth, which is just b to the third power. Because 2 minus 1 is 1, and 7 minus 4 is 3. All right, thanks for watching. Third part um, is available on YouTube for you as well the first, so thank you for watching.